Well, it's the first Saturday of the Pennsylvania rifle season and doe season comes in today. So this morning I filmed Ron shoot a doe uh, with his 308, but today I'm gonna be using a 32 Special. This is actually Ron's grandfather's gun that he won in a carnival in 1922. So that's how old this gun is. Pretty cool, it has this rear sight and uh, folding buckhorn sight and saddle ring carbine here. Uh, so gonna take this and take a walk through the Pennsylvania woods. I know a lot of people use the 32 Special today for deer hunting. It's a one of these historical deer hunting calibers, uh, especially in Pennsylvania. And uh, I'm just gonna take a walk around and you know follow me and gonna sh we're gonna sneak around through the woods, look for some deadfalls and stuff like that. But before we get into the hunting, I'm gonna let Ron tell you more about 32 Special in this gun in particular. We just finished up our doe hunt for uh, 2019, and John's going to continue his series on uh, classic rifles, on classic hunts. One we're going to take a look at now is uh, the Winchester 32 Special. This one happens to be my grandfather's gun that he won at a carnival in 1922, and it's a saddle ring carbine. A lot of times when you were riding and uh, your rifle was in the saddle and the horse was bucking up and down, the rifle could pop out. So they had this saddle ring you could tie to your uh, saddle and if the rifle would pop out of the case it wouldn't come flying out. Uh, this 32 Special, if you look in the barrel, it says nickel steel barrel, especially for smokeless powder. Well, the 3030 I believe was the first uh, cartridge we had that used smokeless powder and that went on since uh, 1894 but shortly after they came out with the 32 special and the thinking was hey a 32 caliber bullet instead of a 30 caliber bullet it's going to make a bigger hole bigger blood trail and I think if you look at the ballistic charts they believe uh, it's a uh, 10 to 15 percent more energy when it strikes than a 30 30 but the 3030 has better sectional density, penetration, and will uh, shoot a little flatter. So they're really kissing cousins. Uh, you can tell that this is an early one because the barrel band is in front of the front sight. Later on, they move the barrel band behind the front sight. And uh, this also shot smokeless powder. They had nickel steel. You had the marbles uh, folding rear sight. And then if you wanted, you could get the long range tang sight with the lock. It would load through a loading gate. And uh, it had a nice crescent shaped butt plate. So when you put it up to your shoulder, it wouldn't move. It would just fit right in there. I mean, it, John Browning, he was a genius when he developed this. And uh, here's the thing. A lot of people call this a Winchester rifle. No. It's a Winchester carbine. The Winchester rifles had much longer barrels. So the Winchester carbine, I mean, it's probably killed more deer in the Pennsylvania woods than anything. And it is truly a classic. Uh, Johnny's going to hunt with it here on a doe hunt. And uh, we'll let the results speak for themselves. But this is truly a classic. Everybody should have one. I have 3030s and 32 specials. I load for them both. He won it at a carnival <laughs> in uh, Ambridge in 1922. He was a fireman, and I guess he bought a raffle ticket, and he won. Now, here's something I want to point out. A lot of people hated this saddle ring because it would be noisy, and it would flop around, and they took them off. And you'll see a lot of them at gun shows. You'll get what they call the figure eight because of all the years of this thing flopping back and forth it actually made a figure eight on the side of the receiver. So what a lot of people did, they would take a piece of leather and they'd uh, just put a piece of leather so this ring couldn't contact the side. But a lot of people found it annoying, and I guess my grandfather did. This isn't the original saddle ring. He took it off and uh, we put on another saddle ring to kind of restore it. But the original ring would probably be half of that diameter. Uh, truly an American classic, and uh, John's going to give it another hunt. There's the bullet. Flat nose bullet right there. We just push that in there and there you go. Then when you're ready, 
pushes that one in, in there, up, half cock, safety. So, there we go. Let's go hunting. I don't know if you heard me, the leaves are extremely crunchy right now, so he may have heard something and just snuck out there, but, uh, or he's following a doe and I just caught it behind him, I don't know. I can't get a break. That was a yearling, and I would have taken that yearling. Its head was behind a tree, and I snuck up the whole way. I tried bleating, it wouldn't move. Just slowly walking away, I kept the trees in between me and the deer, just peeking out now and then, and just walking straight away. It never gave me that good broadside shot, and uh. But then it dropped down over this bank and I thought, good, I'll be able to get get up on it real quick. And there was three or four other doe there. So that's why that doe was feeling safe. It thought the other doe would, you know, snort. And well, they were a little bit out of range. I think that doe just was a little bit lost. And she knew that, I think she ended up finding those doe, obviously. And uh, I bumped them, so. Boy, I thought it was going to happen. Meh. Meh. Came up here on the hill, snuck up on these doe. I actually chased them down. They were right on this road. They came out, and to be honest, I could not stay steady. At that was a 150-yard shot, open sights. Um, you know, it takes up the whole deer. <laughs> so, I'm gonna keep hunting. Uh, it's getting really windy. I think somebody else bumped those doe. My battery camera's getting low, and it doesn't look like it. This camera picks up a lot of light, but it's getting low light, so not much more time to hunt. See if I can make it happen here. Last light. Well, almost made it happen. A couple times a day, I had opportunities. Um, you know, maybe if I was, uh, you know, using uh, a gun with a scope on it, a little bit, be a little bit more precise. But uh, 
you know, it's just a little bit difficult with open sights. You don't have uh, the zoomed in shot there, and especially when everything's so dark in the woods and, and all sort of gray, <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard past 100 yards to really put a sight on a, on a deer accurately. And I've been walking around. I've walked a couple miles today, and uh, I only saw one little buck, lots of doe, and uh, they're holding tight, and they're bedded, and they're not really moving too much. So tomorrow is going to be colder. Maybe the deer will move a little bit more. We'll see what happens. Like the last day I'm gonna be able to try to shoot a deer with this 32 special I'm just running out of time um, just had several days of rain and we got two more days of rain it looks like the last day it's gonna be nothing but rain Friday evening uh, afternoon gonna be nothing but rain and today it's Thursday I got a little bit of time to hunt in the morning then I'm filming a friend in the evening
I took a shot at one and I only shot at it because it looked like it was injured it looked like a small deer but uh, if I can take it an injured deer uh, I'd take it um, we'll see where it, was. it looked like it was limping on the front leg I know I hit it on the first shot I don't know if I got it on the second shot it came running right up here but I wanted to make sure it was the same deer before I shot and when it took off I could see that leg limping again and I took another shot when it was running just to make sure but uh, I think I heard it crash down here. There's a big doe that come up behind me and it's crazy because I just walked around here, but we'll see what we got. Right there it is. I was just looking down, it was like I lost blood and found it laying right here. Small deer. I don't know where it was shot, but let's check it out. 40 yards from where I shot at that deer. And let's see here. Little doe and got a bulge oh there's bone sticking out right here that's why it was limping it's healed over though but this definitely has a which is odd because it's already healed over that, that might not have been from rifle season and these would both be exit holes no those would be entrance holes so it looks like I hit her once right there and I possibly hit it again right there on the run. So I hit it both times. Uh, see what the exit looks like. Right out both, right out both right behind the shoulder and through the front leg is where the uh, exits are. I got it done. I really honestly didn't think I was gonna uh, be able to take a deer with this just because of the time uh, the short time I have and it's gonna rain tomorrow and it's gonna rain Saturday the last two days of the rifle season I thought man this might be a year I just don't film a, a deer hunt but hey right there towards the last I literally was gonna get out of the woods here in about a half an hour because I'm gonna go film uh, a hunt friend of mine and so uh, I thought well this is this is it if I don't see anything on the way back to the truck this little guy stepped out, uh, little uh, doe, and uh, you know, I saw it limping, and I saw this one yesterday, I thought, and I thought, you know what, I don't really want to shoot a small one unless I, it's last minute, uh, just to get some meat. I really don't like going into the muzzleloader season, uh, flintlock season, with no tags filled at all. Uh, so I still have a, a buck tag and another doe tag, and this is a good one to take out. Um, I can see where the front leg was broke, uh, and rehealed. It was limping. Um, I didn't know that it had already healed, but uh, when I, it, you know, that's even more to take a deer like that out just uh, so it's not hobbling around all the time and uh, having stress going into the winter. And so this is awesome. Uh, I want to thank Ron for allowing me to use uh, this 32 special. I mean, uh, just adds more history to this gun now. Uh, being that I got it on film, uh, it's just awesome, awesome, awesome. A good little shooter. I mean, uh, just 
Oh, man, you can carry this thing around and it's it's light. I like the fact that it has these extra rear sight. You know, it's like, what, well, how do I want to shoot? Do I want to throw the front sight up or do I want to use the rear sight? I thought, ah, this is kind of cool. I want to shoot, you know, through the peep sight there. And that's what I used. And uh, like Ron said, this thing is dead accurate and it is. Um, I mean, I hit right where I was aiming. It was probably maybe a 50 yard shot, maybe, maybe 40 yard shot. Wasn't that far. The deer run right up to me. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was the same one, but when it got up, I could see that it, it dropped its one leg. I'm like, that's definitely it. And it took off. I took another shot at it and only ran another 20, 30 yards and um, expired right here. So that's awesome. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video. A uh, lot more videos yet to come.